So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and as you can see we changed up the area. It's gonna be a little bit echoey in here because we haven't soundproofed the walls or anything like that but I did want to create a video recapping Windows 365 on the iPad Pro because the first video did get a lot of views, it got a lot of hype, it got a lot of love but there was a couple of issues that I personally dealt with on Windows 365 that I was able to fix with the remote desktop client. So without further ado, let's reset it up, talk about the pricing again but then actually use it through the remote desktop application. And I'm gonna show you how to actually set it up through that application because that was where I had the biggest trouble. I couldn't set it up through the remote desktop. So I was using Edge and Safari to remote into a Windows computer, which honestly is not the best for the iPad. The remote desktop app, miles, miles better. But without further ado, let's get into it. So let's get started everyone. As you can see, we're rocking the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. We have the M1 version baseline. So just so you guys know, we're using, like I said, the Magic Keyboard, and so no external mouse. We're using everything Apple related right here. Just let everybody know that we're literally just using an iPad to get to Windows 10. But if we get right into it, right? So if you guys watched my last video, you guys know the pricing of Windows 365, how to actually sign up for it, how to get that free trial. But now what I wanna show you is actually how to use it outside of Safari and outside of Edge because if I do show you guys, we want to open up Windows 365. And here you can see that we have our dashboard for Windows 365. So you see I have a two core, four gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, you know, cloud PC. So if, what I was doing was I was opening it inside of my browser. So inside of Safari, which again, it's not built for that. It's not made to be compatible with that. So it will open up, it will load, you know, and it will give you a secure connection. So if you just log in, and then as you can see, we're in Windows 10, right? And we're in Windows 10, you can full screen it to really make it look good. But then the second you start doing anything outside of that, so like if I click on Edge, then you can see that everything kind of zooms back in, that everything gets pushed down, like I can't see my start menu, as you can see it's down here somewhere. So it's a little wonky and I don't really like it. So I'm gonna X out of here because I found another way to actually use it. So if we X out of here, all good to go. The first thing that you wanna do is actually go into your dashboard, right? So here you have your access to your cloud PC, but before you go into it, you wanna go over here where it says download remote desktop. So click on that, and then you get four options, right? Depending on what device you're on, you're gonna follow those instructions. So if you're on an iPad, go with the iOS version. I know we're on iPad OS and things like that, but use the iOS version. So we'll go to the app store, let it open it up, so you guys can see what app it is. I already have it installed, as you can see. Ignore the rating, it works perfectly fine. But then this is where it got a little confusing for me because obviously I saw that and then I tried to download it and do it myself. But when we go into the RD client, so the remote desktop client, there was a plus button. So this is normally empty. As you can see, I have my cloud PC already installed and ready to go. But what I was doing, which was kind of messing everything up, was if I press the plus sign, which is what you do to add a new PC, I was adding a PC, right? Which kind of messes everything up. This is the way you don't want to do it, right? Because all this was, kind of hit or miss, it wasn't connecting correctly, so avoid the add PC button. And what you wanna do is actually add a workspace. So if you press on the plus sign, add a workspace, and then you get an email or workspace URL. And now you're thinking, Fernando, where do we get this URL, right? So get out of here, go back to the this section right here, so this dashboard, and then all you do is you click on get subscription URL, and then you're given this URL. Once that's given to you, you just press copy, X out of here, go back to your remote desktop, press add a workspace, and copy that URL directly into here. So once that's out of the way, once you've installed it into your remote desktop client, it takes about two, three minutes for it to really come over here. But now you have your cloud PC right here, which is the same exact one that I was using on Safari. And now if I click on here, you're gonna get the same prompt, right? You're gonna wanna log in, make sure that it's you. But again, you're connected to the same two core, four gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and then voila we now officially have Windows 11 on the iPad Pro with full screen, with a mouse. So you can see that I no longer have the regular iPad Pro mouse, which was what we were used to, that little circle, the iPad OS mouse. Now it's a regular point and click mouse. So I can go down here, open up Edge. Now again, it's gonna be as fast as the stuff that I bought. So I got the base level cloud PC, which again is only four gigs of RAM, it's only two cores. So this alone, might not even be enough to run things efficiently, right? So that's another thing that I wanna do is, now that I know that it runs decently, now again, there's still gonna be a little bit of latency, right? Still a little bit of latency, but it's a lot, I don't know, it's just easier to deal with because now the things aren't zooming in and out, my start menu is always there, and I wanna say that this latency situation 
might have to do with the internet, but I want to say it's almost because, again, the computer that I purchased in the cloud just isn't that powerful. But again, you can see that I'm all, all in here and you can see my videos popping up even though we're not signed in. So if we click on here, you are now watching a YouTube video on Windows on your iPad Pro with a beta iPad OS 15. And again, your sound is going to work. So another issue that I had with the previous setup was Yes, you could get sound from Windows 10 through your iPad. You had to go into the settings every single time, make sure that it was turned on and that that was your default like speaker. And then, then it would work. But then every single time you left and you'd have to go back and do it again. But now through the remote desktop, it automatically and by default knows that you want to use the speakers, the keyboard, the trackpad, basically all the peripherals that are on your iPad Pro. Remote desktop app knows that you want to use those with Windows 10. So again, it works perfectly fine. You know, you have your shortcuts, so control T to open up another tab. We can open up ESPN, control T, maybe go into office just to check out what's going on there. But again, it's a little bit slow. And I want to say it's mostly because of the computer that I purchased and not the actual latency and connectivity to the cloud PC. Because again, we know that Microsoft is not known for optimizing their power like Apple is, right? But I definitely, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to upgrade maybe two or three folds, so maybe get like at least maybe get like eight gigs of RAM, 256 storage, four cores, just kind of double everything to see if it runs a little bit smoother. But again, everything opens, you have your file manager in here, you can go into your start menu, you can scroll through. So if I go into my start menu, you can still use your trackpad to scroll through with two fingers, so it recognizes that perfectly. If we open up, let's say Microsoft Excel, let's see how quickly this opens up. I know that Microsoft computers are terrible at opening up Microsoft applications, which is something super weird because the M1 MacBook Airs and M1 iPad Pros run Microsoft products better than Microsoft themselves. But that's just my two cents. And as you can see, it's very slow to open up, but that has to do with, I think, the power of the computer that I purchased versus the latency. I'm gonna to continue to say that. But again, the, th the only menu options that you have outside of the Windows 10 interface is th these three buttons up here, which is a plus sign to zoom in and out. Then you have this to let you decide if you have more than one PC or not. You just click back on there. And and then you can also get a virtual function row key. So I guess Windows knew that maybe some iPad users are going to use this thing. So they created that. So I'm going to get rid of that. But again, overall, it's going to work as a Microsoft computer. So the next thing that I want to do with this series is actually test out what it's going to be like to upgrade it, walk you guys through that, maybe walk you guys through exactly what it's like to do external monitor support. Are you still going to be letterboxed in while using a four by three aspect ratio iPad? Or will you actually get a full display when you're using a 29 inch or a 34 inch monitor, which we're getting a new one soon? But those are all things that I do want to test out with this. But overall, if you need Windows, right? If you're an iPad Pro user that wants to keep using the iPad Pro as their main and only computer, but you happen to need Windows, you know, more so than what the applications for the iPad give you, then Windows 10, Windows 365 on the iPad Pro is cool. It's definitely cool. I can't believe it's running. Like I'm glad that I was able to get through the remote desktop situation. And there it is. But that's gonna do it with this view. Let's get out of here and go to the normal view. So as everybody saw, Windows 365, running Windows 10 on the iPad Pro is possible and it's doable and at the same time through that remote desktop client, it's actually very, very usable. There's very little to no latency when it comes to using Windows 365 as long as you have a strong internet connection. And I'm running at about 600 megabytes per second if I'm like the only person using the Wi-Fi inside. Normally I'm at around 300, 350, so that's plenty of internet. You, I think you need anywhere from 15 to 30 megabytes per second to connect to that external server wherever Microsoft is housing that, right? But then once you get into that Microsoft server and that Microsoft computer, then you're fine You're using their internet. But the latency has been great. Overall, I really like the function, the functionality, everything that you can do with Windows 10. It's literally a whole Windows 10 computer on your iPad, which is something crazy to really, really think about. But stay tuned because the next video, we're actually gonna do some external monitor support. We're gonna talk about different softwares, how to install softwares. We're gonna talk about how to actually spec up your computer if you don't have enough, because I do have the baseline one, which again is two cores, four gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. And just because of that, the computer runs a little bit slow, right? Because I mean, if you bought that computer off the shelf, it's gonna be a terrible computer for the most part, right? But I really wanna be able to push it and see what it's like to maybe run some games, maybe download Steam, maybe actually use Microsoft PowerPoint, use the Microsoft Suite without being limited by the power of what I'm essentially specking up or paying for, right? But that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. We're gonna have a lot more of this Windows 365 on the iPad Pro. So stay subscribed if you are. And if you're not, definitely subscribe to the channel. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out Paperlike, check out Tiny Rigs. They're doing some awesome stuff with iPads and iPad accessories, which will work with Windows 365. But that's gonna do it for this video. Like I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Peace. 
sorry for the echo.